What's up guys, welcome back to the channel for my first season 7 guide. This is nothing crazy because of course the season is still very new, but don't worry, all the role guides, conquest basics guide, and of course the single god guides will all be coming soon once the meta for the new season settles a little bit. And if you want to catch all of those season 7 guides coming soon and are a part of the 70% of people who watch my channel but aren't subscribed, please do subscribe. We're on the road to 50k and I'd love to have you along for the ride. But for now, let's dive into everything you need to know about crowd control, or CC, in Smite. So there's a few major topics I want to talk about in this video. If you want to skip around to specific parts, you can use the timestamps on screen, and if you just want to sit through the whole thing, then you can of course do that too. So firstly, we'll cover the very basics of what CC is, and what it's useful for, and why it's important in a game like Smite. After that, a bit on soft versus hard CC, the differences between them and which is better in different situations. Then CC modifiers, this includes diminishing returns or DR, and crowd control reduction or CCR, as well as a few specific god interactions like tiers passive and how they apply to CC in game. And finally, we'll talk about ways to counter CC, aka cleanses, immunities, purification beads, CC immune ultimates, all that kind of stuff. Alright, so let's dive right in with the basics of CC and what it's all about. So crowd control, or CC, in Smite is defined as negative status effects that influence, limit, or prevent the actions of the affected gods and units. This is quite a broad definition. For me, CC is basically a way to disable enemy characters to make them easier to kill or deal with, be that disabling them entirely in the case of a stun, or just disabling them partially in terms of a root, both count as CC. On that topic, let's move on to hard CC versus soft CC and what the differences are. So in Smite, all crowd controls fall into one of these two categories. Hard CCs are ones that completely prevent the enemy from doing a certain action, for example if someone is stunned, whereas soft CC will not prevent enemies from taking an action but may limit their actions to a certain extent, for example a slow. This will prevent enemies moving, but not entirely, it will just make them slower. For soft crowd controls we have of course slows, but also roots, cripples and blinds. All of these CCs hinder a target in a certain way, but don't completely disable them. Roots will stop you from WASD walking, but they won't stop you from using movement abilities. So you can still move, hence they're soft crowd control. Cripples are the reverse of roots, so still soft CC, and blinds will prevent you from seeing, but you can still take any other actions you want. As for hard crowd controls, there's a lot more of them than there are soft CCs, and generally they're more useful and more impactful. We have banishes, aka Yannis' portal. Stuns, probably the most prevalent hard CC in the game, aka Ymir's frost breath. Knockups and knockbacks, these two CCs are slightly different from each other, but they're basically taken as the same in game. Hercules Driving Strike is a knockback, and Bacchus Belly Flop is a knockup. Also, we'll talk more about this later, but these two crowd controls can't be cleansed once they hit you. We also have Taunts, another extremely powerful CC that only a few gods have access to in game. Taunts force the enemy to relentlessly attack the taunter and have no control over their character. Athena's Confound is a good example. And silences will completely stop you from using any abilities, relics or consumables, but you can still move around freely and use basic attacks. Those are the main hard crowd controls you need to worry about, but there are definitely others which I'll just list briefly here. Disarms stop you from basic attacking. Fears make you run away from what is fearing you with no control over your character. Disorient spins your character around, once again you have no control over your character during this period. Grabs pull you to a certain location. Intoxication removes your ability to WASD move, you'll instead randomly walk around for the duration. Madness makes you attack your allies, or if there's no allies around, make you walk harmlessly towards the caster of the madness. A slippery surface, yes that's the actual name of the CC in game, this is just Scaddy's 3. You slide across it instead of being able to control your movement properly. Trembles make you move randomly towards the source of the tremble, and finally, vortexes will pull you very strongly towards the epicentre of the vortex. Right, so that's all the soft and hard CCs in game. The most common ones you'll see are stuns, slows, knockups, taunts, and roots. Other ones are either weak or uncommon. So while they're not technically their own class of CC, I'll also quickly mention continual crowd controls. These are slightly different from your normal one-time CCs. These include things like Anubis 3 or Arteos Druid Form 2. These abilities don't just apply CC once to a target and be done with it. No, these CCs are continually applied in an area as long as you stand in them. This has applications later on with other things such as cleansing, but I thought I'd mention them here. Alright, so with all those ground rules and basic things covered, let's get into the meat of this video and the stuff that's actually pretty interesting, that being CC modifiers, aka how you can change the duration of yours and enemies crowd controls. So the first, most obvious way to do this would be with CCR or crowd control reduction, go figure. So CCR works basically like cooldown reduction, in that you buy items with a percentage of CCR and it will reduce CC times by that percentage. 
So a 1 second stun with 20% CCR will last 0.8 seconds. To be clear, this affects CCs that hit you from enemies, this doesn't affect your own CCs. CCR is also hard capped at 40%, much like cooldown reduction is. So the second huge way that CC times can be changed is less in your control and is more hidden. Where CCR is fully in your control, you can see how much you have and you can buy more of it if you want to. Diminishing returns, or DR, is basically out of your control, but it does have a huge impact on CC durations. So to sum up diminishing returns as it relates to crowd control in a basic way, when you're hit by a CC, you get a stack of diminishing returns. Think of it like a buff on your buff bar, but it doesn't actually show up. While you have this DR stack, all CCs that hit you will last only two thirds of the original duration. But that's not all. If you get hit again with another CC while you have that current DR stack on you, you will gain a second DR stack, reducing CCs that hit you down to one third of their initial time instead of two thirds. DR stacks, however, do cap at two stacks and last for 15 seconds, but the duration is refreshed every time a new CC hits you. So DR is hidden from players, and I imagine a lot of you watching this haven't even heard what it is before or loosely have heard of it. So what's the point of it? Well, essentially, diminishing returns on CC are there to prevent people being stun locked or just CC'd in general for extended periods of time. It's no fun to be locked into an inescapable CC chain for 5 seconds just because you stepped out of position once in a team fight. So diminishing returns helps you reduce the time that you're CC'd for if you're getting CC'd many times in a row. So taking an example, you have two stacks of DR on you and get hit by a 1 second stun. So 1 times 1 third is 0.33 seconds, right? Wrong. Diminishing returns, and also CCR for that matter, can't reduce a CC duration below 0.5 seconds regardless of other factors. So that 1 second stun would actually hit you for 0.5 seconds because that's the hard minimum. It's a lot of maths to basically say, if you're getting hit by a lot of CCs, they become weaker as more hit you, up to a point of course. It's also worth a note that sometimes true combos, aka combos that can't be possibly escaped, can be broken if you have CCR or DR. A good example of this effect will be when Hercules does his driving strike into ultimate combo. Normally, this combo is inescapable on most gods without using CC immunity. However, if you have a DR stack or some CCR, you can reduce the time you're stunned for at the end of the driving strike, giving you just enough time to wiggle out of the way before the boulder hits you. CCR and DR apply to every god in the game, but let's talk a bit about some specific god interactions and modifiers. So the biggest applicable case of a specific god affecting CC durations is Tyr. His passive makes all CCs last a maximum of 1 second, so anything longer than 1 second is reduced down to 1. But this of course doesn't affect CCs shorter than 1 second. This effect applies before any CCR or DR that Tyr has. So in theory, Tyr could get hit by the longest stun in the game, 5 seconds of Changa ult, and only get stunned for 0.5 seconds, assuming it has 2 DR stacks. That's a 90% reduction in CC time. Obviously, that's an extreme example and not very realistic to your average game, but it just shows how powerful these effects can be and how you should be aware of them in game. They can have a huge impact and a lot of people don't even know they exist. So if you've ever been stunned for like half a second when it should have been 2 seconds, this is why. For those curious on the specifics of how these effects apply, the order is, tier passive always comes first, then CCR applies after that, and then DR after that. There are other god specific examples such as Jormungandr who can't be displaced such as by knockups or pulls but will instead have a fading slow applied to him and take increased damage. Jingwei who can dash out of knockups, no other character can do this, knockups are completely inescapable for other characters. Among others but I won't waste too much time covering every specific god interaction here. So finally let's wrap up this guide with a bit on how to counter CC aka cleanses and immunities. So quickly I'll just define what I mean by these terms. A cleanse is a one-time removal of CC from a character, so if you're currently CC'd it will remove that CC, but any others that get applied to you afterwards will still affect you. CC immunity however makes you completely immune to any CCs that would affect you for the specific duration. Some immunities will also cleanse, and some cleanses also come with immunity, but not always, so be aware of that. So the first thing we'll cover is something you probably know about and have been told to buy if you've been playing Smite for more than a week, that being purification beads. These are by far the most used relic in the entire game and for good reason. These are both an immediate on-demand cleanse and also 2 seconds of CC immunity afterwards. This is hands down your best and sometimes only way of countering CC in Smite. Not only can you remove currently active CCs with a few exceptions, you can also become immune to new CCs, it's the ultimate catch-all pickup to counter crowd control. There are also items that counter CCs, the best of which are Magi's Cloak and Winged Blade. Winged Blade will counter a slow that hits you, make you immune to slows and make you faster. 
And Match Ice Cloak essentially gives you a one-time purification beast that blocks the next hard CC or root that hits you and also gives you immunity for a period afterwards. Continually applied CCs that I mentioned earlier can't really be cleansed. They technically can be cleansed, but they will just reapply themselves instantly afterwards anyway, so it's a fruitless endeavour. What you need to counter continual CCs like Anubis is 3 is crowd control immunity from an item like Beads. And the final really prevalent way you can avoid CC in Smite is using CC immune ultimates. Many gods in the game have complete crowd control immunity after or during the cast of the ultimate. Also, some don't have complete CC immunity but may have immunity to specific CCs. Kali's ultimate, for example, cleanses and gives immunity to knockups, roots and slows, but she can be still hit by other things such as stuns or taunts. Little intricacies like that can give you the edge when fighting certain gods, but most of the CC immune ultimates just have blanket immunity to all CCs. There are other god interactions, such as Chiron's one that cleanses CCs, but as I said before, I won't be going specifically into every god in this video because it would just make it unnecessarily long. I'm sure you can look up your mains and find out for yourself if they have any cleanses or immunities. And one final thing to note is that knockups, knockbacks, and some banishes can't be cleansed once they hit you, but can be immune. So you can preempt a Bacchus belly flop and activate CC immunity, that will stop you from being knocked up in the first place. But if he's already hit you with it and you're in the air, you can't cleanse that CC using bees, you'll just waste them. But that's about it for this guide. Hopefully you enjoyed and or learned something from this. If you did, then of course don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more in the future. Peace.